I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city the, on earth. Bop, bop, boom. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie, and I'm JT. You don't see me on YouTube because uh, I have back pain. And so he's standing. I have to stand. Um, while we're recording this, we slowly pan upwards to <laughs> JT. <laughs> He's um, got his elbows. Yeah, you can frame. just trust that he's there. He's there. Yes. And so he'll be there to make commentary on Disembodied this. Disembodied voice. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So today's episode, we are going to be discussing, apparently a topic that y'all really seem to enjoy is time slips. There you go. Um, you know, I, it's a very fascinating concept, and we didn't realize that y'all liked it so much until we saw the analytics, and we we're like, okay, apparently this is a topic they want to know more about. Yeah, we got to explore it. Yeah, so we're going to discuss that, but before we get into it, uh, we want to thank some para junkies, some new para junkies. So we want to thank, oh, they just changed their name on Patreon, so it'll be different in this episode. Um, but Mimi, um, hopefully I pronounced that right because it's M uh, exclamation point, M exclamation point. Um, then could be MM. MM. <laughs> and then Kirsten Nich- uh, Nichols, then Laura Sleeper, Sky J, and Juanita, aka Boom. Oh. Very nice. So thank you guys so much for becoming para junkies. Yes. Um, if you want to become a para junkie, you know where to find us by become now. Become one. Become one of us. Join, Join us. Man. Join we, us. We have candy. Yes. Well, the more para junkies we get, the more likely it is we'll be sent to some place that will harm us. Well, yeah. When we hit 140, which is going to happen fairly soon, yeah. um, we're going to Waverly Hills. Not soon enough. We're still like 14 away. Like, yeah. We need. We need. Call your friends and say, hey, we want to send these people to a haunted location. Yeah. Oh yeah. I have I have big I have big dreams for this brand and this podcast. We need to we need to get the the Patreon is uh you know, it actually is the way we support this thing. Mm-hmm. Like seriously, it gets us new equipment that we need, um, subscriptions, all that stuff. So Yes. We, and if you're looking to become an ultra para junkie, uh, up until Halloween you are going to be able to get the super exclusive spooky merch that only the Ultra Para Junkies are getting. That's right. And we're not going to say that it grants you superpowers, but we're not going to say it doesn't grant yeah. you superpowers. It's limited edition and designed for specific, the specific person. Yes. yes. So uh, if that is something you're interested in, definitely consider becoming an Ultra Para Junkie Ultra, as well. Ultra, Ultra! Yes. But don't just join for a month to get it because it actually costs more than the tier so so yeah (laughs) (laughs) we'd we'd really lose that (laughs) yeah don't cancel Mm, afterwards interesting (laughs) yes i began to see a flaw in this plan (laughs) no i just thought about that i'm like wait a minute dude (laughs) but yes so uh anywho though not saying that any of our para junkies have done that because once you get there you're never gonna want to leave right no it's true it's true we we that doesn't sound cult like at all (laughs) I don't mean it in that way. When the old, when ultra pair junkies um, come, they they don't leave. That's that's the truth. Mm-hmm. They're they're some of our most. We just committed. had a few hit one year with us yeah. on Patreon, which Straight is super up. cool. Um, anywho, so anywho. Let's, anywho, let's go ahead and dive into time slips. Time slips. Yes. So, what is a time slip? A time slip is a paranormal or unexplained phenomenon where a person claims to have momentarily or temporarily experienced a time period different from their own, usually without any evidence of time travel. Um, These experiences often come as sudden and unexpected shifts in perceived reality, and those who experience them may feel as though they've stepped momentarily into the past or less commonly the future. It's very rare that it's the future. Right. It's usually people are stepping back into um, 
like uh, the 1800s or the 20s or things like that. Um, now, while the concept has been a staple of science fiction, folklore, and paranormal literature for years, there's no scientific evidence to support the existence of time slips. But What? I know, right? <laughs> I have to say these things because sometimes, you know, oh, yeah. people are like, you believe in crazy things. You're delusional. But it's, it, again, everything in paranormal is theory and based on people's experiences. And we are not here to debunk things. We are not here to say some people's experiences are um, wrong or not true and things like that. We just present them and you can make your own decision on what you believe from there. But yep. there is no scientific evidence that proves this. But also science, I don't think, really is interested. And um, I think there are, um, like, quantum physics will be the field in which something like this would be examined yeah so you know there are plenty of avenues for this type of anomaly um to be at least explored uh and again theoretically the concept of you know energy not being able to be dispersed or destroyed Mm. uh and what does that mean when we talk about time how do we even categorize time as a uh as a condition because at best, time is just entropy. At worst, it's a prison that we're trapped in. And until we can break from it, we will you know, have to carry the load of trudging day by day. Exactly. Yep. Yep, yep. So we're going to go over some of the hot spots, if you will, um, and some of the experiences that have happened. Um, so the first one is going to be Bold Street in Liverpool. Which, by the way, apparently, if you want to experience a time slip, go to the UK because they right. got yeah. they got some hot spots for it. But that's a that's a perfect place. Well, is it, um, what's that time travel show from the UK? that's super popular with people. Doctor Who. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's the one. What's that? Chris is. Oh my lord! The man knows all the Pokemon, but he's having a hard time I drawing do upon Pokemon. Doctor Who. It's yeah. only been around since 1963. Uh, yeah, I just don't I don't remember. think he's even seen any of the Doctor Who episodes. Very limited or... things in this world that interest me, but my interests are very, very strong. So, <laughs> Like that's... Pokemon. Yes. He fair loved. enough. So, anywho. It's fair. Um, yeah, JT will tell you about every single Pokemon that you could ever want, if you ever want to get in a Discord with him on that. But Yeah, yeah all the originals, yeah. Yes. Um, but Gyar- anywho. Gyar- Gyarados Life. Gyarados Life. Hashtag Gyarados Life. Anyway, so Bolt Street in Liverpool, England is said to be a hotspot for time slips. Several accounts from the 1990s and earlier describe people feeling disoriented upon entering the street, seeing unfamiliar or old-fashioned cars, people in outdated clothing, and stores that no longer existed. What? hmm Wow. In some stories, the person realizes that they might be in a different time when they notice a store that had closed long ago, but appears open and operational. Oh. So, the Bolt Street time slip incidents um, mostly occurred in the mid-20th century, and so... Let me tell you the some of the most famous accounts. Uh, one of the most cited stories occurred in 1996. A man named Frank was shopping with his wife in Liverpool. He decided to visit the Waterstones bookstore, which uh, if you've ever been to the UK or if you live in the UK, because I know we do have a few listeners, Waterstones is kind of like... We have hundreds upon possibly thousands of the UK. Okay, well, then y'all yeah. know. No. Uh, sorry, I don't look at these analytics, so JT yeah. can tell me uh, exactly. But yes, so. Love our UK listeners. But Waterstone is um, like a Barnes and Noble uh, sort of deal. It's not yeah. really like a, uh, it's not like a small bookshop. So it's, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It, 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 you'd notice if like your Barnes and Noble started, you know, switching to some old-fashioned sort of style just saying putting it in perspective for our american and canadian listeners um now we, uh this store was on bold street and as he was about to cross the road to get to the store he suddenly noticed that everything had changed the road seemed different and the cars were outdated even the people around him were dressed in 1950s style clothing Yo. Confused, he looked around and saw a shop named Crips, C R I P P S, which he didn't recognize. However, when he turned to speak to his wife, she had disappeared. 
Moments later, everything returned to normal. Upon further investigation, Frank discovered that Cripps was indeed a store on Bold, uh, Bold Street, but it had been there in the 1950s. Yo. This was in 96. So, long, long time wow. ago at that That's point. That's interesting. Yeah. That's super interesting. It is. It's super interesting. And, um, and to make it even more interesting uh, is that it is not the only account from this street. Mm -hmm. from, uh, people having similar... Uh, occurrences all on the same street, all, you know, kind of in the same pattern of one minute they're in present day and the next they're, you know, somewhere else entirely, you know, some 40 years in the past. I think that's endlessly fascinating oh, that, yeah. uh, that, that multiple people mm -hmm. will come up with the same kind of the weirdest thing happened. So it makes you wonder if that street just happens to cross through a ripple oh, sure. of sorts. Um, hmm. And we'll get into more of that sort of theory and stuff. Um, yeah, but, I, have a, I have a theory about that, but I'll wait. But you see, it it's not uncommon for people to be fascinated by certain locations. Uh, Easter Island has always been considered mm -hmm. a place where time travel can happen. Um, Outlander actually, I believe, uses Stonehenge. Stonehenge is a big... Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, and Stonehenge has always been such a mystery, and people have... Uh, theorized the many reasons why Stonehenge was built and and, and its purpose, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that most people will conclude that it is lined up with the stars to suggest that it's some kind of calendar thing, which yeah. is about measuring time. So if it were so a place for like a time ripple, it mm -hmm. makes perfect sense. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And if I, I have not read or watched Outlander, my parents are just obsessed with it. So correct me if I'm wrong, y'all, if it was not Stonehenge. But it's something of along those lines where she touches the stone and then suddenly she's sent back in time. Um, and she's able to live this whole double life and right. things she, like that. Right, she travels through time. And, and I, I, I have not watched it either. But uh, it does seem to be a like 1940s woman who goes back to like... You know, the early, early times yes, of Celtic. 1700s, actually. Yeah. Something in there. I don't know. Um, no. Min, the Min is, and Kilts. Steamy, steamy show. Yes. Steamy. It is. Lots of sexy, sexy people. We've heard, because none of us have seen yeah, it. Yeah, we've <laughs> We have not seen it. So, <laughs> I'm just, so for all we, we know. we are giving yeah. our rating. <laughs> no. 10 out of 10 in the steaminess I department. mean, listen. No, my, well, what my, do I know about it? <laughs> Min and Kilts. Steamy. Steamy. I just know that basic <laughs> gist because my parents are absolutely obsessed with that show. Yeah, and eventually yeah. I'll get around to watching it, but I just haven't yet. Well, it's a very popular so, series of yes. books as well. It is. Also, if we have any like super rich listeners, I feel like you and I, let's get together and let's open up a bookstore there where Crips was and call it Crypts. Like Crypt. Oh, like, like a Crypt. Crypt. And sell horror books. I feel yeah. like that That's would fun. be bomb. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so common elements, uh, several other stories from Bold Street share common elements. People s describe a sudden feeling of disorientation, followed by the realization that their surroundings seem to be different from their current time that they're aware of. Um, this often involves seeing older cars, outdated fashion, and storefronts that no longer exist, yada, 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 or have changed uh, for modern times purposes. Mm. Explanations. Various theories have been proposed to explain these experiences, though none are definitive. Um, some suggest the individuals are experiencing intense moments of deja vu, which I think is, uh, is a little... If you've ever... You wouldn't identify stores that are not yeah, there that's, in that's a deja right. vu. <laughs> exactly. I agree. That's ridiculous. Um, or possibly even some forms of temporal disorientation uh, or distortion. Others believe they may be brief moments of altered consciousness where the individual's perception warps their reality temporarily. Although if you didn't if you weren't alive in that time period, I could see if like somebody experiences this and they were alive in the fifties and would have been able to remember how the street looked in the fifties and suddenly they have like a moment of delusion or whatever. Yeah, that mm. deja vu yeah. makes sense because you have it cataloged in your mind. Exactly. But if you were not alive during that time period and would have had no ability to know what that street would have truly looked like, I yeah. think that's a bit confusing. But um so a lot of people like to point to psychological explanations or misinterpretations or of surroundings, but I think people are trying to 
it, it's too broad of a concept for our small brains to really comprehend that I think a lot of people like to just say like, oh, it's psychology. And right. that's kind yeah. of how it is. Just Somehow your psychological disorder allowed you to see a sign from 50 years ago. Exactly. That you had yeah. no Read idea Read it, recognize existed. it, and understand. <laughs> <laughs> it is odd. Uh, it's absolutely peculiar. But it is interesting to note that a time slip story usually goes like this. You find yourself in this other time by simply being in a position or a place and, and everything is transformed. Mm-hmm. It might be a very, 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 very intense residual haunting. Oh. But it's also possible that all residual hauntings are, in fact, time slips. Oh. And what you're actually wow. witnessing is a moment in time that has fluctuated and maybe isn't strong enough to absolutely alter your ability to be in the present. You are just witnessing a piece of time that is being, you know, held in place for whatever reason, you know, high emotional stakes or things like that. So... This is where it crosses paths with the kinds of things that we do because, again, it's all theoretical. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter how sound a person's uh, concept and construct of how the paranormal world works or how the supernatural works, it's all conjecture. We're all kind of like these are the, uh, the elemental pieces and we put it together. But a time slip and a residual haunting, they have a lot of the same similar things. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well... That's very interesting. There's also theories that, that align with um, astrology in the way of mm. there's these lines that cross through the entire globe, essentially, and different people, depending on when you were born and like how your chart aligns with these lines, there are certain areas where you can benefit, you can reap certain benefits, um, like your career, you can do better in your career in certain areas if you're closer to these certain lines, or um, your love life can be better if you're closer to certain lines. So if that's a theory, I don't see why it wouldn't be a theory that there's certain lines where these time slips occur, or there are almost yeah. ripples in reality, oh, yeah. and people and again, are just crossing over it. When you go into like paranormal research and you talk about these things, people are always talking about ley lines, and they're always talking about areas where uh, ghosts have more sway, more more ability to communicate. Uh, that too fits in with this idea because time is an elusive beast. We can't completely pin down what it is. It is how we interpret the reality that we are in, but that might be a very simple uh, uh, matter of, of combined um, agreement of what we're experiencing. But the truth of the matter is, something that happened 100 years ago happened, right? So it's somewhere. It, it happened. But if you think of it as uh, pages of a book, that 100 years is still there. It's yeah. actually a part of the same volume, right? If we're on page 120, something that's on page five, still there. And if there was a way to accidentally step into a page tear and go back to page you know, 15, we would see what was on page 15. So there's, it's so bizarre that we spend a lot of our time uh, worried about things like paying bills and, uh, and, and you know, getting dressed in the morning, when in fact, we have a very tenuous construct that suggests that reality is actually there. Most of science points to the fact that reality is less there than it is there. You know, there's 99% of all matter is not there. It's not there. Yeah. So we, we, are, we are determining that 1%, the 1% that we all accept as reality, is the predominant thing well, 99% of it is just empty. Uh, and it's probably not empty. It's just we don't get it. Mm -hmm. Before history is written, it's played. Before it's frozen in time, it's fought one shift at a time. Before it's etched in silver, it's carved in ice. What happens next? will last forever. The Stanley Cup Final on ABC and ESPN Plus begins Saturday. I uh, I had a thought the other day, actually. I was watching this octopus, and it uh, changed 
colors. And I'm like, God, if an octopus can change colors, those can exist. Time oh. slips can exist. Right? I mean, You're that's having just, like that's an existential like, crisis right now. Well, it's just like, right it's now. like stupid how cool that is. And oh, it's yeah. almost, it looks like a miracle every time they do well, it. Well, and when they do it, it's so immediate. Yeah. You know, they can, they can change their, time their slips color can just be a thing? that easy. Well, yeah. And that's just it. The universe is very complex. <clears throat> All the pieces are very, very complex. And we determine that just what we can see and experience is the only thing that exists. Uh, and that is probably to our detriment. You know, the reason why we keep running aground with everything we attempt is because we ignore the vast majority of what actually is out there mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we cling so tightly to what we can observe and what we can prove when, in fact, there is so much more. You know, we're, we're just scratching the surface of reality, uh, but we cling to it. We cling to the surface. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that's why I was kind of saying, you know, it's... Um, the, a lot of the people that just blatantly say, no, that's not possible. I think it's mostly because if you think about it too long, it sends you into an existential spiral. It'll unravel. And yeah. 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 So we're, we're, we're held together by that belief that we're solid. Exactly. And so some people will just say like, well, it's psychology and that's it. And because it makes you feel more comfortable. It does. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But no, absolutely not. Um, I mean, it, obviously, we all subscribe. We've all subscribed to the reality channel. Exactly. Um, and and uh, try as we might to change the channel, it's very difficult. Exactly. Um, but yes, but that does not mean that the popularity <laughs> of these stories uh, has not created Bold Street as a destination for people. people yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know? You know, um, and, and, I want to go. You know, the fact that we have such a definitive place, you know, to, to be able to say this is where it happens. Because I want to say that there is a story of people running from the police mm -hmm. and they like turn the corner and they find themselves like in the you know fifties hmm. and, and then all of a sudden they're back and the police are right on them because they stopped running because <laughs> they were wow. like so oh. freaked out by this, you know, sudden alteration of time. <laughs> wild. That is wild. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so a lot of people do visit the area and subsequently have also reported their own experiences. And this is further the street's reputation as being a hotspot for time anomalies. Um, so the next one, though, is the Versailles time slip. Mm. Mm. Um, now, one of the most famous time slips in, occurred in this particular area happened in 1901. When so again, it's not even just a modern thing. No, no. It, this has been documented for a very long this period been, of time. This been, I mean, 1901 is when a concept like this would be very unpopular. It would be witchcraft. I, I feel like it'd be witchcraft or it would something be, like that. It would that. be super well, and as long as, as as we're at the idea of 1901, um, every culture has folklore that bases itself in this kind of thing. Uh, specifically, we get the Rip Van Winkley stories, mm -hmm. the stories of people who, who disappear from this plane, and then when they return, it's 100 years later. Uh, you know, Urshu, Mataro, uh, Kukulain, uh, there's countless folklore and, and fairy tales and things like that where people step into fairy rings, and when they step out, they're suddenly, you know, 50 years older, but only a minute past. So these kinds of anomalies are registered in the consciousness of people. Um, and maybe it's just because, you know, time moves fast on us and all of a sudden we're like, why am I so old? Um, and, and so they come up with these stories that kind of like explain that it was a magic thing that happened to you. But it exists so, so frequently in our folklore that we have to take pause and think, what were they experiencing that made them want to set this down and tell the story? Yeah. You know, to tell the story of another plane. Because that's another thing is a lot of times in these stories, they go to another plane where time works differently. You know, where an hour in the other world is 100 years in our world or 100 years in the other world is only an hour in ours. You know, back and forth, that kind of concept, that time is relative. And that doesn't, that doesn't jive with the reality we, we, <laughs> we exist in. Mm -hmm. So we, for my theory, I feel like it's if you've ever seen Found Destination, that's a movie about a time slip, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's exactly what it is. It's Absolutely, a, it's a movie about a time slip, and uh, you know, it made that actually made me think with like the Bold Street uh, thing is like, what if, what if 
it's not your time for something to happen. And so they are pushed by some, up, you know, whether it's you believe in God or the universe or whatever, you know, maybe maybe that is what is pushing whoever is experiencing into it to kind of give a pause and a break and then continue their life. And that raises an avoid interesting something. question because mm-hmm. Final Destination, people would call that uh, a premonition movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you call it a time slip movie, that means maybe people's premonitions and prophecies are in fact just time slips. Whoa. They are it's actually be- witnessing mm-hmm. something of the future in the present and that time slip is uh, is registered as prophecy or premonition. Man, right. this is getting this is getting super deep. We might see a color changing octopus or something. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> time is a color changing octopus. It's yeah. true. I want that on a t-shirt. Right. Yeah. Um so well, what's interesting about the time slip in Versailles was that the two people who experienced them were academics and again, academics aren't typically ones that are swayed very easily, but regardless, um, Anne Moberly and Eleanor Jourdain visited the Palace of Versailles, and they claimed to have seen people in period clothing and experience a sudden change in environment, suggesting that they had somehow slipped back into the late 18th century. Mm-hmm. They wrote a book about their experience entitled An Adventure. Mm-hmm. So the initial experience was while visiting the Palace of Versailles in France, Moberly and Jourdain decided to tour the Petit uh, Trianon, um, a small chateau on the grounds that was closely associated with Queen Marie Antoinette. However, while they were looking for the entrance, they believed that they took a wrong turn and ended up walking through gardens and groves that felt oddly silent and atmospheric. They noted several figures, including a woman sketching who they later believed to be Marie Antoinette herself, and the men with heavy, flat black hats who looked to be from the late 18th century. Both women felt an overwhelming sense of gloom and oppression during their walk, and they didn't immediately discuss what they'd seen with each other, but when they did uh, a week later, they were shocked to discover that their experiences matched. So, okay. the aftermath, they started doing research for the book, um, and Moberly and Jourdain began researching the history of Versailles and the Petit Trianon. Um, they believed they had experienced ghostly remnants of events preceding the French Revolution. Their okay. conclusions and accounts were later published in a book in 1911 titled An Adventure under the pseudonyms Elizabeth Morrison and Francis Lamont. The reception of the book, um, the book attracted significant attention and sparked debates about its authenticity and many were skeptical and alternative explanations range from simple mistakes in identification to the effects of the sun or even exposure to a gas that affected their perceptions. Um, Jourdain revisited Petit Trianon um, several times but never experienced the same events again. Moberly, however, claimed to see Marie Antoinette once more on a later visit. So Okay. Fascinating yeah, story. Yeah, no, extremely fascinating. And very yeah. well documented for the time, which is super oh. interesting. Right. You know, the fact that they were able to really uh, focus in on the experience um, and also the fact that they uh, they released it under pseudonyms is interesting because right. it's, it suggests, A, that they weren't after the fame. You know, yeah. <laughs> right. And B, yeah. they themselves may have realized how crazy it sounded and didn't want it associated yeah. with them. Right. And so, you know, there's that's probably what it there's, is. There's something interesting. You know, yeah. you're you're a serious yeah. academic, and it's like, no, I had this experience. But if I tell people, you know, my my academic credentials might be, you know, called into question. Uh, there's it's interesting because I want to say that one of the time slip stories that I had heard was um, during World War One, someone having very distinct time slip into World War II. Oh. You know, finding themselves in a battle that they did not recognize and they were actually, wow. uh, I want to say that they, they, they recognized the swastika in World War I as the symbol of this coming war. Oh, wow, as a, really? As a symbol that, okay. that would come up. And I was like, how interesting is that? And how disorienting right. is that? You know, because wow. it did not take long. Between World War I and World War II was not a long time but the advances in military technology, amazing. Right. Sure. You know, uh, the difference between a 1917 
uh, plane and a 1940s plane <laughs> were, you know, staggering. Heck yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you hear stories like that where people are in a situation. And um, I think that was one of the only f- ones that I really know about that was a future. Because future, like I said, right. I don't know many of the stories from the future. But if we believe in time slips, then when a person from the present goes to the past, that it's actually the past receiving a visitor from the future. And I know there are a lot of stories about, like, wasn't there a body found? Or a person, man. Um, yeah, I think I know Chum out. There was somebody right. who came and claimed that they were from the future, and yeah. all of their identification seemed to be from a place that yes. no one knew where it mm-hmm. was, and uh. and and uh, they were like, and then he just disappeared. Yeah. Uh, or uh, there was another one where somebody showed up and like just had stunningly <laughs> accurate stock predictions, and then like disappeared the next day. Like showed up, mm-hmm. cleaned up, disappeared. <laughs> It makes sense. Oh, yeah. Now, um, the next one is referred to as the Vanishing Hotel. Uh, and this happened in the 1970s. So this also happened to an English couple, to two English couples traveling to France, claimed um, that they were sta- they have stayed at a strangely old-fashioned hotel. When they tried to find it again on their way back, the hotel was nowhere to be found. And further research indicated no such hotel ever existed. Oh. Yeah. Now we're dealing with something uh, yeah. entirely different. Right. <laughs> Goodness gracious. The story of the Vanishing Hotel is another intriguing and lesser known account often grouped with tales of time slips. It's a story that blends elements of both time distortion and ghostly experiences. So um, the story goes that in the 1970s, the two couples, uh, the Simpsons and the Gisbys, were traveling through France on their way to Spain. They decided to break their journey and find a place to stay overnight. Simpsons, huh? The Simpsons. Oh, that's, that's weird. Super weird. Anyways, <laughs> that's super weird, right? Because yeah. I mean, yeah. for y'all, for I'm sure the majority of listeners oh, I'm know, sure I mean, but know. for anyone if, who doesn't, yeah, the Simpsons are uh, the Simpsons show is famous for predicting the future. Uh, you know, um, so many episodes, uh, very concretely. <laughs> Uh, made reference to things that did come to pass. Yeah, they, right. they, they, uh, Trump. Mm-hmm. They predicted yeah. Trump, right? Yeah, and not they just predicted, predicted it. They, they, they literally had him coming down yeah. the escalator. They, like, mm-hmm. had the actual scenes from the future play out on the screen. <laughs> and you're like, uh, that's, that's so, so weird. weird. That's so weird. Um, but after some searching, they found a motel that seemed oddly out of place. It appeared old-fashioned, resembling something from the 1900s rather than the 1970s. The rooms lacked modern amenities, and the windows had thick wooden shutters, a rarity for motels of the time. Odder still, their room had no phones. Now, other strange occurrences marked their story. They noticed that the other guests wore old-fashioned clothing. The next morning at the hotel restaurant, they were given coffee in bowls, not cups. Bowls? Yeah. Coffee in bowls? Yes. That's how it used to be served? What? Yes. Shut up. And their bill was also unusually low for a night stay, even by 1970s standard. And so- Hold on, I'm still stuck on the bowl thing. Yeah. Coffee in bowls? Coffee was like soup. Why? What? Huh? Well, you figure... You can't be the only one that's like, what? I'm a little confused as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't think that coffee was on the, on par with um, tea at the time. Okay. Because tea was served in a teacup. Oh, yeah. But I don't think they put coffee in teacups. That makes sense. It's been weird flex from the ancestors, <laughs> but all right. Yes. So, <laughs> I'd drink a bowl of coffee. Are you kidding me? I would. Wake up with a bowl it's of coffee. It's going to get cold blah, 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 so blah, 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 blah. fast. It's going to get cold so fast. You better get to slurping then. Oh, Slurp. God. Yeah. And so on their return journey from Spain, the couples decided to stay at the same hotel again, probably because it was cheap. And so, oh, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. It cost three pennies. Yes. <laughs> and however, they couldn't locate it. The hotel, which had been so prominent on their way to Spain, was nowhere to be found. Mm. When the, couple, the couples later tried to find the hotel on a map or through other records, they were unable to. Even the photographs they had taken of the hotel during their stay didn't develop. Intriguing. Mm-hmm. So, some, That's cool. uh, so some explanations. Uh, the most phantasmical 
explanation is that the couples experience a genuine time slip, uh, momentarily transporting them into a different era. Mm -hmm. Um, Some other people like to say that they... uh, the, a more mundane explanation, I should say, is that they simply misremembered the location. Ah, boring. Right. Or confused Although, it with stupid. another establishment. We can also say that they might have gone into another dimension entirely where right. people drink coffee out of bowls. Right. Yeah. You know, um, the fact yeah. that you know, they could have gone that into a, like, a completely <laughs> different dimension. Right. And then um, there's also the logic of memory distortion fatigue or other psychological yeah, factors stupid. which uh, that no, would it make split. sense for all four of them to have the same memory yeah the fact things? that there was four of them does put it in a different category because when it's one person talking about it it's like well then you could be influenced by anything like even the two women seem to be separated in uh, versailles well, they were they both had the same memory though. Like right. th- their story was the exact same. If, if dolphins in Savannah can eat on land, time slips can happen. You're really having an existential what is up crisis. With your, your, I'm just your, saying, your, man. <laughs> your connection to aquatic life and time it's slips. Just, it's, it's just it's a it, there's bizarre. a connection there. I don't know. You know dolphins are mammals, right? They breathe air. But they but they <laughs> eat it but yeah, but they eat on land They're in Savannah. They're the only dolphins in um, the world that hunt on land. It's so well, cool. yeah. It's the dopest thing. If you didn't know that. Yep. It's yep. true. But it's also because the Savannah River is mucky. You don't want to eat anything that's coming out of there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so the last one uh, rationale for it is that with um, this type of story, there's always the possibility of establishment, misrepresentation, or even the tale being a complete fabrication. I don't even think that's I, that, yeah. that, that doesn't seem on the table to me. But regardless, that's just me. So, yeah, uh, it's not even fantastical enough to fabricate. Yeah. It's just odd. It's just weird. Exactly. You know, because I don't even think they're like, we went back in time. They're just like, this is a weird place with weird things that happen weirdly. And there are plenty of weird places out there. Yeah, especially yes. the first story, like with Bold Street, it was so just, it was, I'm not going to call it mundane because it's, you know, time slips, so it's never mundane. But like at the same time, it's like, you know, it, if, he, if he was making it up, wouldn't it have been like a, you know, Right. Something it else. was the coronation day. Store? I saw the king. You know, yeah. Yeah. Right. right. You would imagine that the embellishments would be greater. There you go. Than that's what I was thinking. I saw a department store that actually stood here fifty years ago. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, so overall, though, the vanishing hotel story, um, while it's not as famous as the Versailles or Bold Street incidents, it still remains very intriguing as a narrative within the time slip genre, if you will, raising questions about the nature of time, memory, and our perception of which I think all of this truly is, um, that's kind of the moral of this thing, is maybe question things a little bit more. Right. Um, but also, it's just interesting. And if you it's have... endlessly fascinating when it really comes down to it because you can go down many different rabbit holes uh, with time slips because time slips are a question of perception. And then it's like, mm-hmm. well, what we're perceiving in the present may be as tenuous as, you know, taking a step outside and being in 1917. Yeah. Right. So it's 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 an endlessly fascinating concept and, and, and discussion. And I think that it all came about because we were discussing at one point a haunting that had more elements of time slip than actual ghost. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, uh, walking into a room and having, like, everything be different and things like that. And that is an interesting thing. Or, or, or somebody showing up. And then showing up again just a few minutes later. <laughs> right. And so um, if you guys have ever had a time slip type experience, oh, yes. please send that in. Because I would love to hear more about people's time slip experiences. And since it came up, if you have very strong senses of deja vu, because it's possible that deja vu is a time slip situation as well. Mm-hmm. Or a glitch in the matrix. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had a We had a listener one time associate mimics with time slips. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, that was a part of that conversation as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, um, you know, and that's that's compelling as well. Um, and not entirely out of the possibility that some mimics aren't, you know, um, not necessarily trying to deceive you into things. But the way that our understanding is of mimics is that it's out of, it's in its own category, just like time slips are in their own category. And you don't typically um, interact with other people like that in time slips is what I can tell. Generally, 
you know, because you would think that there would be much more stories about somebody appearing out of nowhere in weird clothing, you know, on the mm-hmm. street, uh, especially in these places where it seems to happen regularly. You'd think that you would have heard all along that, you know, this street in Liverpool keeps seeing people show up and they're weirdly dressed and they right. seem very disoriented and confused and then they disappear. Yeah. Um, so it's possible that when you experience a time slip, you're invisible to, mm-hmm. you know, the people of the era. Um, you would think that there would be more stories like that. Although there are plenty of, and you'll see them, you know, there are lots of, of um, is this a photograph of a time traveler? Where you see somebody who seems to be wearing like a modern shirt in an old photograph. Mm-hmm. I want right. to say there's someone in a Char- Charlie Chaplin movie who seems to be holding up a, a cell phone to their head. Um, there's yeah. a, a lot of those those things. And, and it's like, I'm sure there's an explanation, but there is something strange about it. Uh, one of the most interesting ones, I think, is, is that a Muhammad Ali fight? Someone's holding up what very much looks like an iPhone. Really? As if they're taking a picture. Oh, that's crazy. And it's just like, I don't know what it is, but it's yeah. it really raises a question. You're like, oh, <laughs> is time tourism coming on its way? Are time we gonna, tourism? Are we going to be time wow. tourists at some point? You hear point? that, Elon? Oh, God. Get on it, bud. Going to, I will not get in an Elon Musk time machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's pushing it a little bit, but the... um. But regardless, though, it is just an interesting topic and um, one that is not super well explored. So it's interesting to just throw around theories because, again, some people don't like to have their reality, uh, you know, disoriented, if you will. And so some people just want to leave it at psychology or deja vu or whatever you want to believe in. Yeah, I feel Um, like I feel like the listeners of this show might. You never might know. Be, might be on the. Uh, you never the, know. But the, uh, it's other end. It's it's fascinating just to take into consideration. I mean, again, just dealing in 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 theory, um, challenge your perception, challenge reality. I mean, I find it fascinating that uh, uh, there seems to be this groundswell of of manifestation. You know, people are always talking about you know how to manifest your wealth and how to manifest you know the life you want to live. Uh, you know, meditate and things like that. Turns out that many of these practices were practices long, long ago mm-hmm. where it was about seeking an enlightenment and seeking a, an internal path to what you want uh, because we had far more sway over reality than we were trained to believe. So maybe our reality, while it is a consensus, you can alter it through dedication of thought and meditation. And a lot of that came to be popularized and most people don't realize it is through uh there was a book about law of attraction sure that really made that a popular thought is like if you think about something enough even if you don't want um that thing in your life like saying like man i really hate speeding tickets and you keep thinking about how you're going to get a speeding ticket eventually you'll get a speeding ticket even though you didn't want it but you kept dwelling on those thoughts. So that's really the basis of the law of attractment. One of those really fascinating things, uh, if you've ever read or looked at messages in water, there's there's a lot in that that I think applies, which is where uh, they like had a glass of water that they labeled love and a glass of water that they labeled hate, and they basically spoke words of love to one glass and words of hate to the other glass. And then when they froze the water, they looked at the ice, uh, the ice formations, and the ice formations of the love glass, beautiful, pristine crystals, the hate glass was marred and bizarre and malformed. And we are mostly water. So if you're sitting out there down on yourself, talking hate to yourself, you are altering your actual chemical makeup. It's a fascinating thing. And you know, I don't know how much I invest in it, but it's such an interesting concept. Yeah, so we can do a whole different episode on law of attraction on, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and things like that. But uh, So let us know if you would like to hear that. But regardless, though, um, thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. If, Of course, if you have a ghost story that you want to send in or a time slow story, uh, you can send it to ghostmail at hauntedcitypodcast.com. That's where we are going to pull all of those sort of things to Uh, share on the show so if you want to make sure that we see it it's best to send it to the email but with that my name is madison timmons i'm chris susie and stay spooky y'all